think he's gone? He'll be in some B&B. &B. Don't worry about your dad. He can look after himself. I'm tired. I haven't been sleeping. Neither of you two, by the looks of it. Why well, hasn't he even rung us? I'm sorry, love. I don't know what's going on in his mind. And you don't care? You think I should? No, you only care about yourself. Holly. It's all right. Go on. Got nothing to say. You might feel better if we talk about it. I doubt it. I'm going to school. Look, I'm, I'm not having her taking it out on you. She's in shock. We all are. You're not sorry you threw him out, are you? Of course not. He had it coming. I know. Look, I'd better go to it. Are you okay? Fine. Sean. Morning, Terry. Happy birthday to you. No. Happy birthday you to you. You remembered. Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, love. Oh, thanks, that's champion. You don't know what it is yet. Right. Well, it could be a stick, couldn't it? <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's a rug. Hey. Oh, my. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, though. I don't want to think too hard about how old I am. <laughs> Forty-nine's not even halfway to an hundred. Huh? Huh. Oh, <laughs> don't want to get too much scars for wearing ties. <laughs> All the more reason uh. to have a special one for when you do. Ah, it's good thinking. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> no sign of uh, Ken, then. Oh. Happy birthday. Thanks, lad. Happy birthday, Dad. That's very nice, that is. Very nice, son. Well, it's just a card. No. I don't believe it. What are you going to do? No idea. Right now, I'm looking at divorce court, maintenance payments, growing old alone, drowning my regrets in a whiskey bottle. Sean. I don't know whether to go up there or stay away. I mean, maybe I should talk to the kids, maybe I shouldn't. No, no, look, hang on. Uh, you've got to take this slowly, one step at a time. I mean, first, you're going to need somewhere to stay. You can come to us. Have you got space? You can have the sofa. Right. Yeah, thanks. And second, do nothing. You've just got to stand back and let the dust settle. Morning. Yeah. Then what? Mm-hmm. That's no problem. So that's 18 people at 8 o'clock. My pleasure, Dr Collier. Bye. You're supposed to be 18! <laughs> John Rillall? I don't think so. <laughs> Must be the effort. Uh, that and word of mouth, we're on the up, Tricia. Well, calm down, it's only one book in. Yeah, one big book, and we've got a clean bill of health from the inspector. <laughs> and you hear that? That's more reservations! Oh, Chris and Kathy are going to be so impressed. Good morning, Shane Marlon. And Eric's going to be furious. <sighs> Can I put this in your window? I want a lodger. You're not advertising a house of ill repute in my shop window. I just want company and a bit of rent. Nothing doing. Mrs Windsor, I think people will admire your tolerance and generosity if you help charity to settle. It's a pound a week for the card. You deal with it. I'm not taking money from this woman's hands. <laughs> You're good with her. I find that reminding her of a stature in the village often helps. Oh, and it's always a good idea to appeal to her thriftiness. You mean she's vain and grasping? I don't think that's what I mean. Don't worry, I won't tell her. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Coconut sorbet with a rum and raspberry coolie. It's going to have a caramel basket. Can I be running? Hey, hey, who's the chef? It'll be fine. Oh, I hope I'm not interrupting. I, I just wanted to fix a date to do my review. Well, how about tonight? I mean, we've uh, got a party of 18 coming, so there should be quite a buzz. And I've got a feeling I'm going to be on top form. Oh, well, in that case, provided Diane can make it, uh, tonight it is. Oh, get your taste buds ready for a treat. Oh, I don't think we should take any more bookings for tonight. Someone's going to have a big cramp. Ah. Oh. <laughs> bit uh, crowded in here, isn't it? Yes, it is, isn't it? 
you want something? Yes, I'd like to book a table for two for tonight. Seven o'clock. Sorry, we're full. I think we can fit you in. You don't mind being a bit squashed, do you? A bit squashed. That's not a phrase you often hear at the best establishments. Well, it's all I can offer you. Fine. <clears throat> we'll see you later. What do you want him for? Hmm. Let's see. We've got a full house and uh, reviewing the paper. And Eric sat in the corner witnessing my trial. Oh, I get ya. Could this day get any better? <laughs> Just the paper, please. Are you all right, Sergeant Reynolds? Why? You ought to have a word with that charity dingle. What? She's put an advert in for a lodger. Have they brought in a law against that? Charity? With a few other girls in that cottage? Do I have to spell it out? Blokes will be sniffing round there like bees round an honey pot. You know what men are like? Get a life, Viv. She wants to take this more seriously. Maybe charity will have a male lodger. Hello. Uh, I saw the card about the cottage. Is there still a room going for us now? No. Yes. Can I just check something with you first? Don't take offence. Do you want to live in a brothel? You what? It's three doors down. Charity Dingle. Thanks. Is she all right? She takes the morals of the village very seriously. Right. Bye, then. Judge not lest you be judged, Mrs Windsor. You're getting a bit more assertive, Emily. Thank you. Not a compliment. Mark. You seem a bit down. No, I'm fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't believe it. What? Someone's turned the freezer off. It's all defrosting. Well, switch it on again, quick! Oh, I can't refreeze it. It's been off overnight. Anything we don't eat in the next day or two is going to be wasted. Well, look, I just switched it off. I've got a pretty good idea. Carlos! <laughs> so, what do you reckon, then? I think it's fab. Do you want to see a few more people before I decide? Oh, no, you're in. Just like that? Sure. What? Betty didn't want to serve you yesterday. And this weird woman in the shop seems to have something against you. Do you know what that's about? I'm a dingle. So? So it seems to put some people off. Does it bother you? I work for Marlon, don't I? Well, do you want to move in today, then? It's 200 quid a month, and I prefer cash. Yeah, why not? I've got loads of stuff, though. Oh, well, we'll take my car. I'll call Terry to help us shift it. Terry? He does jobs for a bloke I'm seeing. Get to use him when I need him. Oh, sounds like a good arrangement. Works for me. <laughs> I didn't think you could sink so low. Sorry? Sending Zach to check up on me? That's stupid. I'm used to that from you. But unplugging my freezer, Marlon, that's criminal. What? You set foot in my kitchen one more time, I'm calling the police. You understand me? Fine, fine, you call. I'll do you for slander. I've never been near your freezer. I promise you'll be mother's head on Trisha's head. What's going on? You're a nice girl, Trisha. Shame about your taste in men. Ollie! You're in my way. Ollie, I want you to talk to me. Oh, well, that changes everything. Tell me why you're so angry with me. Why should I? Why do I always have to do what you say? You never do what I say. Come on, let's start again. This isn't about you and me, is it? <laughs> it's about all the men you've made in my family, yeah? Me? You shut my dad out! Because he betrayed us, Ollie, all of us. If I was him, I would have slept with someone else at all! Ollie, that is a horrible thing to say, and I know you don't mean it. <laughs> don't I? Ollie, please, let me try and explain. Get out of my way! Ollie, we're gonna talk this no, through! No, no. Ollie, come on, let's come on. I hate you! Why did this have to happen? Just leave me alone! I'm guessing they'll go for the sorbet. Could do with being a bit firmer, though. I said it was runny. Oh, thanks. Very supportive. Where's Chloe? Why isn't she here? Good question. Well, what was Carlos on about? I never touched his freezer. You don't think he'll do anything to us, do you? 
tit for tat. I mean, even though we didn't tit, he might tat, you know what I mean? Good evening. Have you booked? No, we didn't, love, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, we're full tonight. Sorry. Sorry. About time. Is all right? Of course he is. Well, sort of. Where have you been? Found somewhere to live. I'm going to be Charity Dingle's lodger, your cousin. Oh. <laughs> ah, good evening. Huh. You're over here. It's a bit tucked away, Thank isn't you. It? Never mind. Maybe we still have a good view of the proceedings. You're living with charity? Yeah, I've got lots in common. Oh, right. Oh. Hello, Marlon. Ah, good evening, <laughs> sir. Madam. Now, no preferential treatment, please, just because I'm writing a review. I think the food will speak for itself. Chloe, Chloe, table six, best seats in the house, and two complimentary glasses of champagne are on the way. Don't listen to him. We'll have all the preferential treatment you like. <laughs> <sighs> I brought you some food. Ollie, come in. Lasagna, your favourite. Are you going to make me try and come downstairs and eat it with you? No. Force me to talk to you? No. Then what do you want? I just want you to give me a minute to say my piece. You don't have to say anything, all right? When I think about what your dad did to me, it really hurts. I mean, it makes me feel physically sick if I think about it too much. And hearing you say that it's all my fault, that's, that's like the worst thing in the world I want to hear right now. He chose what he did, Ollie, knowing it could wreck the family. Now what we've got to do is pull together and get through this as best we can. That's it. Well, when I think of Dad, I want to hit him. I want to slap him so hard. But I don't want him to go and live somewhere else and then just come and visit every now and again. I know. I understand that. Then why did you chuck him out? Why don't you go and find him and tell him it's OK, he's got another chance? It's not that easy, after what he did to me. And what about what you're doing to me? If you really cared for me, you'd go and find him. Try and understand, Ollie. I can't just do that. Because you're too proud. No, because he hurt me so much. I don't want to grow up without a dad. I mean, you try and be nice and say all the right things. But you're just going to do what you want in the end, the same as always. You're just trying to get me on your side. That's not what this is about. Well, I'm not on your side and I'm not your friend. Ollie, please. Get out of my room. I hate you, OK? Get out. I can't get my head round this. How could you be so stupid? Frankie. And she's great. How could you do this to her? I'd like to say I was out of control, but I wasn't. I just couldn't find the willpower to walk away. I used to think a lot of you, you know, Sean. Good mate, good boss, top family. Now it turns out you're just another weak, selfish bloke with his brains in his pants. I've had enough. Here, Sean, hang on. I'll see you back at the cottage. Nice one. Oh, you look terrible. Bit of bad news. Somewhat serious, I hope. Stay out of my face. A what? Oh, don't start, Kane. Don't you start. Oh, we're just here to celebrate. Kane, get the beer in. All right. Thanks, Zach. Don't talk to me. Marlon Dingle's Thai monkfish and green tomato curry was little short of miraculous. I beg your pardon? Hmm? Oh, nothing. I was thinking out loud. We agreed, you remember? I was going to be entirely honest of about course. this with you. Of course. Bon appetite. What do you think? Well, the fish appears to have disintegrated and uh, the sauce is really rather sour. He's not at his best, is he? What am I going to say? Five minutes late. That's fashionable. It's no problem. You've got a contact number, haven't you? Not exactly. I forgot to take one. Well, you've got his name, haven't you? Collier, that's all I know. Dr. A.P. Collier. Maybe he's in the phone book. Everything all right, Marlon? 
Everything's fine, isn't it, Marlon? Peachy. Good. I just want you to know that I'm, I'm enjoying myself immensely. <laughs> hey! Enjoying yourselves? Yes, thank you. Do you want anything to eat? We've got a special promotion on. So I've got a lot of food I need to get rid of. Have you? Someone turned the freezer off. Did Marlon mention it? How do you mean? Who stands to gain from the wool pack losing out? <laughs> you reckon our Marlon did it? No dingle would sink that law, all right? I really don't think it could have been Marlon. You know what I think? I think you all might be a little bit biased. I wonder who did do it. Who cares? Our Marlon's right chuffed, eh? <laughs> I'll be pleased as punch. I'm going to see if there's any sign of them. They're an hour late. Well, perhaps I said nine o'clock, not eight. What am I, an idiot? No, not an idiot. I don't know what time they said. They said eight o'clock and it's now nine o'clock. And are they here? Just a minute. Uh, no, no sign of them. Seriously, Trisha, I think there's something wrong with him. Oh, he's just stressed. Nothing. Nothing. 18 covers up the spout. <laughs> it's a disaster. I'm going to find this collier. I'm going to track him down and I'm going to get compensation out of him, even if I have to tie him to a chair and threaten him. There's stressed and there's weird. That's weird. Well? Well, it tastes all right, but it's, it's almost liquid. The coconut sorbet had a firm but delicate texture. Diane, that's a lie. Yes, it is. What's more important, your integrity or Marlon and Trisha's business? Everything all right for you? Mm. The venison was a bit tough. <sighs> I'll tell the chef. Tomorrow, probably. Is he all right? He seems a bit um, agitated. Don't say I said so. I think he might be having a nervous breakdown. No! I've always thought he was rather uh, highly strung. <laughs> the necessary materials were nearly all at hand. Tonight, perhaps, my theories would be tested. What are you watching? I pray to God I would succeed. It's, um. It's film. You don't even know, do you? I've been in a bit of a dream. You know, uh, sometimes when I've got a problem on my mind, I try not to think about it at night. <laughs> Always makes it seem about ten times worse. You save it till the morning. That's good advice. So, uh, you're gonna go to bed? I think I'll sit here for a bit. Want some company? Come here. Thank you for being so nice. It really makes a difference, you know. I think you'll have him back? Lots of women would. A little affair and a long marriage. Lots of women would just shout a bit, then shrug and get on with it. Yeah, but what about you? It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> He's done this awful thing and now all the responsibility's on me. You'd like him back though, wouldn't you? I just want whatever's right for you. Hmm. Thank you. Go to bed now. Sure you don't want me to stay? Sure. And Mark, save your worries till the morning, eh? <laughs> well, thank you. That, that was... Uh... Yeah, glad you enjoyed it. Was everything all right? Given his mood, he did a pretty good job. See you tomorrow. Have you got my bill yet? Rather empty tonight. Don't start, Eric. I thought one of the roles of a good chef was to make your customers feel welcome. Well, Marlon's entitled to be in a bad mood. We were let down by a big party. Oh. oh. I'm just going to powder my nose. Did you ask for a deposit? Still, you'll have made a note of the contact number. No, we don't check up on everyone. Ah. Well, perhaps it'll teach you to be more careful in the future, eh? <laughs> if you have a future. What do you mean, more careful? Um, who made the reservation? Uh, perhaps I've come across them, eh? Yeah? 
Collier, Dr. Collier. Initials? FP. You know him? Do you like crosswords, Marlon? What are you on about? I particularly enjoy anagrams. How much help do you want? Dr. A. P. Collier. E. R. I. C. Uh, th that's, uh, <laughs> that's Eric, isn't it? You did this. No, 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 no. Just uh, an amusing coincidence. But I can know before I do something like that! You challenge me, man. You should know me better than that. Eric Pollard, it spells Eric Pollard. How can you stand being with him? Um, I think it's time we left. Any time you want to talk about selling your share, Marlon, uh, do come and see me. Get out! Let's face it. You're a half-decent chef who should stay in the kitchen. You lack the social skills needed to run a good restaurant. A law onto him. Maybe he's right. Maybe I'm not cloaked to run a business. Of course you are. Do you know how much money we lost tonight? Chris and Kathy will never trust me after this. All my life, I've dreamt of owning my own place. I know it's falling to pieces. So... It's been a bad time, that's all. I think Eric's won. I want to give up. 